Vesper, the company that's uh, making the application to the township. So I think what I'd like to do is take a couple of minutes here and give you all the background so you know exactly what's going on. Uh, I've heard all kinds of stories. I think most of them are wrong, so let me give you the correct information. Uh, last year in October, the governor and the legislators passed something called Public Act 233. And if you never heard of it, don't feel too bad. A lot of the supervisors haven't had much activity with it either. In fact, in the last two supervisors' luncheons, I've asked both times, has anybody been approached on a cell like this or anybody doing anything with Public Act 233 and not one of them said anything? When they passed that law, it's because the state legislature and the governor decided they want to have us meet a certain threshold what they call green energy alternatives in the state. As you know, they've been shutting down a lot of coal plants and stuff. And so they're looking at solar, wind, and what these are called are BESS, which stands for Battery Electrical Storage Service. Uh, big batteries, basically, to replace some of that service in the state. Uh, I can tell you that on, in our case in Groveland, there is a, uh, a pathetic lack of electrical service available in parts of the township. I had a friend of mine who has a laser mill company about a year, year and a half ago wanted to take some of the township's Peckhart property and put a laser plant on it, which would have created about 50 or 60 very good paying laser mill operator jobs. And so the consumers came out and said, well, I don't have enough electricity there for all those mills. It's going to cost you almost a half a million bucks to get it started. So he ended up moving it down to uh, the end of Telegraph in Pontiac where some old GM stuff used to be that he had a capacity. So it has already cost us one good potential client in the tech park that would have had some real good jobs for our residents here. But that being said, the goal of the state is to try and get these technologies deployed. They did it in kind of a different way. They passed the law in October of 23, and then they said, well, it's actually going to take effect in November of 24. It's fall coming up. And the way it's written is they've kind of been tried to induce us to say, well, if you can accommodate these uh, technologies, that's great, you know, and then to sweeten it, Eagle, and if you don't know Eagle's the new name, what we used to call the DNR, Eagle uh, has a promotional program going that they will actually give people that support these technologies going in fairly substantial sums of money. And in our case, for the kind of plant that Vesper's talking about, this has the potential of generating about a million and a half dollars to the township for it. Plus the fee that they pay on their initial permit, which adds up, so it'd be a little over two million dollars altogether. The other issue that's facing all of us, since this thing takes effect in November, this is our last chance, basically, or a narrow window to see if we're going to do this kind of a program, how do we do it and maximize the benefit to the township and make it work. And in order for that to happen, a couple of things have to take place. We have to get it done in order to get the grant money before the end of September, because that's when the program expires. And they say they're going to do it again next year, but they're not sure when they'll start it, and who knows how that gets done. And we have to make sure it complies with their requirements to do it. If we don't, in November, this state law that's already on the books, Public Act 233, takes effect. You can read it yourself. Teresa Bills made some copies for us up here if you haven't had a chance to look at it. But it basically says, once November rolls around, you can still try and work with the applicant, but if they decide they don't want to do whatever it is you're asking, you just go to the Eagle and you get the permit from them as long as they meet their requirements. And I spent a lot of time trying to find out what's the lay of the land on this, so I finally got a hold of the legal firm that works for the Michigan Townships Association. I spoke to the lawyer that's working on a draft they're trying to put together, and I spoke to the person in, in Eagle that's actually been hired by them to write this ordinance going forward for November. And it turns out she's a lady that works at Michigan State University. Very helpful, as a matter of fact. So I've spoken to both of them, and I've seen their draft ordinance. It looks exactly the same to me. And you get a pretty good flavor of where it's going. Now, what happened here, because some people said, oh, they're not trying to be transparent. Nothing could be farther from the truth. I got contacted four or five weeks ago by Jessica and a fellow that she works with named EJ. And they came to me and said, we leased some property with an option to buy in your township. Here's the project we want to do. This is pretty common. Whenever anybody moves into the township, it's a business operation. They almost always come to the township office. 
ask for a brief meeting and say, here's something I want to do, we'd like to talk about it with you. And that's what they did. And I can say this, in the subsequent meeting and emails and phone calls we've had back and forth, I do think Vesper has been very uh, cooperative and I feel that the, the, the flavor of the discussions is positive for us to be able to make some changes that we think would enhance the ability of this site to be able to go in. But you need to keep in mind, if it doesn't go in, in November, the state law takes effect. They can go directly to the state and they don't even have to ask us. You can read the state law and it says right in it, you can make suggestions, but if they don't like them, well, it doesn't matter, we don't have to do anything about it. So that's the environment we're operating under. This is to try and get more electrical service to replace a lot of the old coal fire plant things that are in the state. It's to try and make it work. I've looked at the ordinance that they've drafted out. I actually think it's a pretty good first start at it with a couple of changes that uh, Jessica and the people at Vespa have been pretty positive about. So today's meeting is to let Jessica talk to you about the technology. And I think it's about an hour presentation. I actually don't have slides, so I think okay. maybe kind of Q&A style. That's, uh, that's because EJ missed his flight from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> My counterpart had more of the, the data, so. Well, um, and then she'll answer some questions for you, but I also want to tell you that uh, subsequent to this, a couple of days ago, we just set up another meeting. It will be on June the 12th at 5.30 at the township office just down the road. And that meeting is with the lady that's working for Eagle from Michigan State University who's actually writing the ordinance. So today you'll be able to ask questions about the people that sell these techniques and services and how they work and some questions like that. On the 12th, you can come and ask the lady that's actually writing the ordinance for the state of Michigan. What what, time? What's going on? 5.30. And uh, the only reason, I, it's not, I don't know if it's in the paper yet or not because we just locked it up a couple days ago. Um, so the ordinance is specific statewide or just to grow? The ordinance that's down the books is statewide everywhere. Uh, yeah, they're all subject to the same thing. But what surprises me, in a county the size of Oakland, I'm the only guy that's ever been contacted. I want to be, so I'm amazed that there aren't any other ones. There are some other ones going in in the state of Michigan that they're proposing. Uh, and there are other systems that are smaller than this, but rather than take all the way, I'd like to turn it over to you, Jessica, if I can, and uh, the floor is yours, okay? Sure, thank you, Bob. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Um, great to see such a large turnout here. Um, so, as Bob introduced me, my name is Jessica Anderson, uh, associate developer with Vesper Energy. Um, we are a utility-scale solar and battery energy storage system developer. So, um, a lot of the projects that my company does are large solar projects with um, um, like the, the, the best, as we call it, kind of coupled with the solar in order to harness um, extra energy so it's not then wasted to be able to kind of dispatch that back onto the grid. But what we're talking about here is what we call a standalone best project. So there will be no solar panels associated with this. Um, we're calling this project Woodson Energy Storage. So if you hear me refer to this as Woodson, that, that is why. Um, I guess a, a good starting place is maybe calling our attention over to where um, we are thinking the site will be. Um, so you can see this Google Earth image here with uh, the roads labeled to kind of get ourselves situated. And of course, this is just the land. Um, we do have a preliminary site design that is in the works. Um, our engineering team is responsible for that. I am not an engineer, so <laughs> I can't speak to some of the more technical elements there, but I can absolutely take questions as the evening ensues and um, bring back information. Yeah, Jessica, if I can, just to let you kind of get oriented where this is. Yeah. That, that's a 62 or three acre parcel. It borders I-75 on one side. On the left there, that green strip is really the ITC power corridor, the same one that runs across the township's property, runs all the way through the township because they have to be able to get access to that or to feed their battery service back in. Uh, if you were to look on that map to the right side, uh, there's some empty property there and it's very close to the, I think they call it the River Church down there, mm -hmm. okay? And I don't know if you know this, but the River Church, uh, I believe, is in the midst based on some discussions both I and the supervisor in Springfield have had to 
try and take some of that property that's right next to it and turn it into a gravel pit for a while. So um, when I say, I think out of all the places in Groveland Township they could have picked, I actually think this one's kind of the best because you got the power line on one side, I-75 on the other side, and was probably gonna end up being a gravel pit for a while on that third side. And the bottom border there that you see is kind of the division between Springfield Township and Groveland Township. And I think there are roughly, I could be wrong, but I think it's roughly four houses on the south side in Springfield and maybe two on the north side that are in Groveland. I'm sorry, I just thought that helped them know where it is. That, that is helpful. Um, Bob, real quick, is this kind of across from the south board? I'm sorry, what? Is this near the south board? Uh, I think it's not too far from the south because he's off at 75, right? It's across 75. Yeah. Okay, all right. It's east. What's so the east? It's east. Yeah. So over the side is off at 75 and it's just oh. yeah. Yeah. I was wondering, how does, how does this help any with our power issues we have in our area? Because that ties directly into the IPC transmission yeah. lines. And, and I don't so know that it benefit us one whit. Uh, and, and it may not. I don't know that. Other than that makes power available generally to the utility companies that buy it off of IPC. Right. I, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea how it actually gets from IPC to consumers or DP or anybody else, but it's not going to change the feed line. Yeah. But it's part of the equation that the state's looking at to provide enough raw power in the state. Replace yeah, the I understand that, but you had said we, we lost out on business because we didn't have appropriate power in the area. Well, this doesn't benefit. I, I, I don't know if it will or won't because I have asked uh, consumers to take a look at the possibility of trying to use something like this to get more power to us, but I, I that's a separate negotiation that will take a long time. Yeah, I think that's something that needs to be leveraged. Because, you know, uh, you know, I, I agree. I've been yeah. leveraging every kind of power option you could think of with this. But you're right. I have a question to piggyback on his because you said it would bring two million to the township, but how will that benefit us as citizens? Well, not just the township. Especially the that for your, it's not, right? it's not the, the money doesn't go to the township board. It goes to the township, so it could be used for a number of things. It can be used for either road work or additional services or buying some fire equipment or a number of things. It's just, right now, it's just a large number. Is that, is that over 10 years or one no, year? No, that's in one year. No, it's annual. One time only, one right? Time. No, no, it's one year. I'm sorry. Well, on top of this too, I'll just mention, um, we will be paying a decent um, sum in property taxes over the projected life of, of this. Um, I believe that our property tax liability is estimated to be in the neighborhood of 215 million um, over the span of about 20 oh, years. Okay. Um, I thought you were saying annually. I was like, no, it was not. <laughs> 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 That's just true. No, it uh, starts slightly low, escalates over time at a nominal rate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Could you just possibly dumb it down, like how the technology actually works? I sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. No, of course. So um, essentially, these are just large lithium ion batteries. So same battery that's in your cell phone or your laptop, just shipping container size approximately. Um, so this, that facility itself occupies approximately five acres. Um, not all too large. Our projected like total developed area is, is gonna be in the neighborhood of about 10 to 12 acres. And that is because there will be some like ancillary equipment to connect to that existing power line. Um, so like a switch yard and a mini substation right there. So out of the 66 acre parcel, we will be disturbing is the term that we use, like approximately 10. Um, and it will be pretty well screened by the existing trees there. But um, yes, to answer your question more so, um, essentially we, store excess energy that is in the, the high transmission lines, and then uh, we sell it back to the utility in times of need when the supply is um, less than, than the demand. Um, so these have the overall impact of helping to kind of regulate the energy grid and account for power intermittency issues, and it has the long-term impact of bringing down the, uh, the rate that you see on your electric bill. 
how much of a load does it take off the grid? I mean, they have to maintain it. How much power does it consume? Yeah. It's not developing power. They're right. Storing it. So it's storage. Yes. Now, how so that much is does the normal difference. maintenance systems use? You know, the fans for cooling, the fire, all of that stuff has to be a parasitic use off the grid. So how much does it take from the grid from us already before it even contributes back to the grid? There's a sophisticated analysis necessary to fully answer that question. Um, yeah, but the, the, answer, the system is 300 megawatts. Yes. Yeah. That it draws? That, I think it's capable of storage. Yeah. Well, I, I don't care about storage. I know I got storage. I don't know what I mean. Those are, I understand what you're asking. I understand what you're asking. Those are questions. It draws 300 kilowatts. That's storage. I mean, is it? Is no, no, no. It's storing it. It's the just. I understand that. My well, question well, is, let me explain. So it's just like you store it in, in an energy device. It's a battery. and. You use it once and then it dispatches it. You never draw more than that. I mean, but when it gets down to a certain level, a battery it. tender, for instance, on your car, a trickle charge. So let's say the batteries aren't used. What's the trickle charge? It's constantly maintaining them, right? That's yeah. Connected. Yeah. Right. That's my whole. Point. That's my question. I'm asking. I guess that would be ITC's you issue. You see, you're pulling the load off the grid, grid no matter what. But yeah, we, don't load. Very bad we don't connect directly to those ITC lines. Line. Those are those are probably two hundred and forty thousand old lines over there. So can you have a it's getting warm in here. Do you want me to turn the air back on? It gets noisy. So if if you've been to Pentwater, this operates similar to that great big reservoir they've got. So if they use a pump, pump up, fill the reservoir, and then during yeah, the times of uh, yeah. peak when they need the power, they regenerate. They drain the pond to generate right. power. So that's really all this function. Yes, it's a parasitic load. It's right, fairly negligible. But it would charge when power is cheap. <laughs> if, that, if that makes sense to you. So they charge during the cheap hours, you know, and then discharge during the expensive hours. Um, yeah. And as the state forces us onto more green energy, it's going to become more quiet because wind's not reliable and the sun don't shine all the time. Mm. So that's that's really where these these shine. I'm not too fond of them, but I mean that's that's the whole reason. I think you've got it exactly. The state's made a commitment to <coughs> doing this. We can see from the way public has two thirty three was written, they're going to do it. The question is, do you want to try and work with the vendors and have a positive relationship and see if you can modify it a little bit better for your own community and with the grants there are some dollars to go to the township to the township or to the council okay or you want to just say i refuse to do anything let the state do the whole thing in which case you're going to get whatever they decide that that is, that is it in a whole nother thing There are grant dollars for solar systems, grant dollars for wind systems, and grant dollars for uh, BS, BESS systems. And the BESS system has to be a minimum of 50, kilo, or 50 megawatts of service before it qualifies. So I've done some preliminary analysis for the people, people, but yes, I still have to go back. A lot of this stuff, I'm just being honest with you, fairly new to me as well as it is to you, and we're trying to make the information to everybody at the same time so we know exactly what's going on. I have no idea. I can tell you the only inquiries I've ever had for a solar farm at my office in the time I've been here have been a couple of inquiries from people that wanted to do it in our tech park. But I'm just telling you, they are not going to want to pay the money that we intend to charge for that property to put solar on it. It just would be possible. And you guarantee that solar will not be happening? Okay. Yeah. Can you describe
that's all to say that the specifics monitoring system, I can give you like a high level overview, but this is something that we'll be figured out as we kind of move through the development process. Maybe all the NFPA department. Thank you. Uh, yes, how many stories do you I believe that the number is eight for current state assigned sections. So uh, we're very early in the process. Okay, so we're very early. One of the containers, from what I researched, typically what they use for high pressure missiles, like containers, fire suppression. Or fire suppression. So the fire department doesn't give a call unless it goes outside of the container. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, uh, one thing the fire department is about 2,500 degrees, which will help. I guess I should have said something. Once it burns through the roof, all that heat, or most that heat, goes straight up. I guess my question is, the high pressure is this that I have read about specifically used. Uh, these are the latest ones that have been developed for the fire. Is that actually inside of the container, or is that a shroud around the container? Traditionally inside, um, okay. there yes, is sir. increasing evidence that suggests that the sprinkler system as a fire, fire suppression tactic is actually counterproductive. Um, as Kevin was just saying, um, water is not the solution to an electrical fire. fire. So um, our, our standpoint is to not implement these sprinkler systems. It's we actually much water more than the one way. To protect exposure. It's the only reason. Yeah. I mean, the average pestle fire thing takes 20 pounds of gallon yeah. and just put it up. And that's why you don't put them on. And you still don't put them on. Yeah. You Let put them in a pool of water, pull it out, it's still just a catch spot. That's what some of the municipalities do with the parents' state. You've got, you've got 300 megawatts that you put there. How many megawatts are contained? How often? Um, 80, approximately. I worked on a system with a high cube shipping container. We were only able to put about half megawatt. And then granted that was that was what you might on that. So it was about S. These are that cards. Was an eighty thousand pound container for half a megawatt. So I'm curious how you're gonna put three hundred megawatts. Even if each container has two megawatts, that's a hundred and fifty containers on one site. That's, that's not what they submitted. I'm sure that we're dealing with something now where I don't know how to do it, but the site plan, this is exactly why we want the site plan to go through the township and not just you. Okay? I saw language in Eagle's filing that said, we think you need a minimum of 80,000 square feet for one of these. 80,000 square feet is less than two and a half acres. It's not even two acres. They bought 62 acres, and I want to make the ordinance a minimum of 50, which even if you have these other problems, distance is your friend. And so that is why I think it is to our advantage, because keep in mind, Public Act 233 is already law. We're not arguing about, are we going to vote for it or not? You've probably heard there were a lot of people taking petitions to fight for home rule on this stuff, which I adamantly support because I am the guy that three different times the Michigan Township Association asked me to go up to Lansing to testify about them trying to take away home rule on gravel and sand mining, which I'm totally opposed to. But in this case, the governor and the legislature has kind of gone past all that and said, we're doing this. And you can make your request, but if you don't want to do it, or you make requests that we don't think are reasonable, we don't have to pay any attention to any of them. It's right in the law, it's that blunt, okay? So, so I'm, I'm telling you, it's to our advantage to be able to do Now, this is a personal property, not frozen. So the one thing that happens is that it, they, they don't have to sell it. They don't have to do it. Well, but somebody is. Apparently, somebody, they've got an option to buy it already. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. However, why did that happen when it is zoned residential. No, it's zoned REF, Rural Estate Farm, which for us is how our agricultural property is zoned. And by the way, that is the suggested zoning that the uh, Michigan State people have said these sites should be on. Well, the map that you have on your website then is incorrect. It's Rural Estate Farm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, almost the, the whole township. And then and the zoning, um, and then you don't have ordinance. I, I don't under, what I don't understand, and I, I don't mean this up, but that I really don't. I'm just very concerned about Twelve and Down, and I want to make sure that these people understand what they're getting into, because I know they don't, because they haven't been doing it. But you don't usually have an article in the paper announcing it's coming before zoning is changed and the ordinance is yeah. under, and then when you contact the planning commissioner and they tell you, we don't know anything about it. That is scary, Bob. Well, because as soon as they told us, I didn't want to keep it from anybody, I released the planning commission. Up, and at the next available planning commission meeting, I brought them all up to date on it. That was just this past week. I did it as soon as we got it. The, because nothing's been agreed to yet. I told them you're going to see something coming. Here's the state law. So they don't have input in your planning commissioners do not help and have input in your ordinances and zoning? No, they will. They because will. it has to go yeah. to the planning commission. I I can't tell the newspaper one day, the planning commission of I did them in the sequence they came out. I get requests from people all the time about different things, and I don't take it to them until I think there's actually going to be something happening. And it took almost two weeks to get, I had to call our state rep to get help to get a hold of somebody in Eagle that would even return a phone call to me so I could get the information on it. We have not held anything back. And then I gave the second story to Dave when I said we're doing this meeting. We, and, I, and I've got a video running on YouTube, uh, Facebook right now that's been on for about a week and a half talking about this. I'm doing everything we can to tell everybody the Planning Commission will be involved in it, but you need to keep in mind the reason we're under some pressure here and under the gun, so to speak, is if we I don't do like something, it's going to happen and they're not going to care whether we like it or not. It wouldn't have necessarily happened. Definitely in no. this scenario, but that doesn't mean they would have, the state would have picked that property to say, this is where but, but we're going to put it. Can you tell me a better piece of property to pick when the because state says, I'm not assuming because they did. <laughs> no, the state did not. No, but but the applicant this did. It's the applicant's decision. The applicant's decision. So does it have to be rezoned for agriculture? No, no. The recommendation of the state is that these be done with a special land use permit on a piece of agricultural property. Again, I'm I'm just telling you this is this is what I found as we researched it. They want it on agricultural property. They're willing to do it on less than two acres, and if you don't approve it in November, it becomes the state law kicks in, and they can approve it, and it says in the state law, we don't have to accept any of your conditions if you don't like it. What I'm telling you is, these people have been pretty cooperative in working with us and saying, yeah, I think we can do something to make a little better here or a little better there, and that's what we're trying to get to. And that information is gonna ultimately have to go to the Planning Commission to be reviewed, from the planning commission, if they get to the point where they're comfortable with it, they send it to the township board, the township board has to approve it, and it has to get published before it's law. And what I'm telling you is, this is a bit condensed from what would normally happen, because we wouldn't be up against this deadline that in the end of September, or, yeah, end of September, the grant goes away. Okay. there's something I found we need that we don't have for what we were doing this, you can bet that would be something we would ask for. Now, again, subject to the state law, we have to continue to have a positive working relationship with them like we've had so far. I'm optimistic we can get more than the state law would require for our community, and that's my main concern. How do I make it safe? And is there a way for us to get money from the state on this that otherwise we wouldn't get? That's my concern because I realize that the alternative is we don't get to you say anything. It, it, is, it is that simple. If it gets to that point, mm -hmm. how long would it take to build this facility? Well, I don't know. It looks like the construction plan. What's the question? The, uh, the construction plan. Yeah. yeah, the construction process in itself takes 
about a year um, from the second you hit ground, you get the notice to proceed to when we're energized. Um, however, we're years away. This is projected to be a 2029 project. All goes according to plan because of a lot of studies that are involved as part of the due diligence process. Um, a lot of that corresponds to the energy action section. So we're potentially five years away before you turn the lights on. You know, so. That's correct. of why we selected this, but I think that those are kind of the big points. Sort of your website, yeah. referring to your website, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the question.
the typical growth of the bill, about 13.5% of it stays here to run the fire department of township. So the rest of all of that bill goes to schools and art institutes and county and everything else. So, yes. Thank you. So um, the other question I had was um, in my previous employer, one of the things I did was disaster response and recovery. And because we may not be able to stop this in some way, that you look at mitigation first, you plan for something, you respond, you recover, and then you, re you mitigate again. So looking at this site, we, we would be in the mitigation phase to say, if this or that happens, what could we put in place to reduce the impact? Like in a hurricane, you put yeah, I, I would agree with you, yes. except that that's the part that would come a little bit later as we find out. I've had I've had Chief Mason involved from the very first meeting, and he's done some research on the NFP standards as to how you're supposed to take care of these. And he's got the documents on that, but obviously we would want to sit down with their people, which they've offered to do, and they have a group that does their emergency response and say, well, what do you do? And that's when we get a chance to look at it and say, well, we agree or we think you need to tweak this. That, that, that is the essence of exactly why this has all been brought up now. It's because we're trying to get to the point where we can make some, what we think are positive changes to make it better than what the state's like to do. As I, I, if you read the ordinance, even if it's not done, you get a pretty good idea for what they're saying. And when they say 80,000 square feet, I think that's a ridiculously small parcel for a facility like this. So we have ideas of what we want, but some of it would be, you know, I can't tell everybody or even the board everything because I just had a couple of meetings and it's taken me this long to get the basic information together for everybody. And that's why we made this meeting available and another one with a lady from the University of Michigan on June the 12th. We're trying to get the information, not only for ourselves, but to the public so you understand what's going on. Again, we're all operating against the same scenario. If you look at what Brandon's doing right now, the week after I they released a story on that we were talking to these people about a possibility here. The next story, but it was a couple of pages into it, was on Brandon working on wind and solar because it's all part of that public act 233. They're, they're essentially trying to do the same thing we're doing on those other services between now and the time that that bill goes into effect. And I'll also say, in my previous life, I worked over 30 years in a different capacity with fire, and I have a lot of faith. Of course, we don't want anything to happen in the community, right? Sure. But I have a lot of faith in the hazmat team, the mutual aid team, the fire response. You know, I, I, I don't want something to happen, but I will tell you, and I'll support the chief of saying, um, the mutual aid and, and the hazmat response, there's a system in place that really works. If I can say the, the fire marshal. I'm sure we develop one for this. Yeah. Well, so my last question, these are real big questions. questions. Go ahead. Is you know none of us want it in our community, but it doesn't sound like we have any capacity or any authority to stop. So can I ask who you're leasing the property from? That should be public information. Is it an individual? Uh, it's an entity. I, I, yeah, I saw the name. I just don't honestly. I just don't remember what it was. It's not that it matters. They have a right yeah. to. It's whoever owns the property. Yeah. Do you think Justin? You don't know them. I, mean, I do. I'm just not 100 percent sure I'm able to discuss that right now. Um, okay. So uh, is your agreement with the employer that owner or with the township or is it owned through? I just don't have it. The township doesn't have any jurisdiction over the deal that goes. Uh, because that would be the thing to do, but
you could stand next to I-75 with a dB meter, and the average noise level is about 73 dB because the tire whine of the vehicle is going by is that high. So this is significantly below that. But it's constant. Well, what I read was the mean of the Yeah. The so it's just like your air conditioning. Yeah.
if and when that happens, it will be once the system is operational um, with extremely stringent measures in place to make sure that our business practices will continue to be reflected and reflect the things we Okay, and I have another question. In just a couple of minutes, when you look at your company, you know, you're based in Dallas, correct? Is that correct? Yeah, Dallas, Texas. Texas. Okay. Um, my question is, He's ready to take an arrow for you. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. This, you need to vote for this guy. I hate to say this in public, but because he he's the one who got me to the Eagle folks, so I actually can get somebody to answer. Yeah, I want to answer. It goes back to your wind turbine and so forth, the neighbors and so forth. Act 233 just became effect this year. Uh, passed the state legislature, clear partisan lines. Uh, the governor pushing this hard. Um, so what you're stuck with is... If a landowner wants to sell, say you don't have a generational farmer, and the landowner wants to sell his farm for a solar company, they come in and give him a price. He can do that without any ordinance restrictions. Now, there's a size requirement, but it's not that bad. 
So anything that the state wants to fix this green energy grid, they come in and take. If the owner, the landowner is willing to sell it, they don't have to ask the Anybody? local ordinance or, or township municipality that they, you know, if it fits or not. They can just take. That's the problem with this. So uh, you don't have a lot of options. Try to get ahead of the game. Try to have something in place. Very admirable. Hopefully that works. Um, so they, but even if he does that, they can still put and say, too bad, we're not going to abide by what your ordinance is. Well, correct. Yeah. But, but, but it would require the yeah. company saying, we don't want to work with them. And what I'm telling you is, these people so far have been very yeah. cooperative and want to work together. I'm just together. saying, they'll, they'll take this land. So that, so if the owner is willing to sell that land, the state will allow them to do it. That's, that's what it is. The, the, the point I was making is, I just wanted to have input. I'm glad or I want to give you it. Oh yeah, well, and that, that all I was done. just wondering where this is where this is going, who's seeing it, this and when this is going to be available for us to see. You, you, know, you need so. to just watch. Well, first of all, I would probably come to the uh, June 12th meeting because you can ask the gal who's writing the ordinance to the state some of these questions, and she should be able to at least give you the feeling of which direction they're going in. And secondly, this will go through the planning commission. I've just been trying to get the information together for them. So they have some data to work from, but it ultimately will go to the planning commission at a regular plan, planning commission public meeting. After they get done with it, assuming it gets approved, it gets a recommendation to go to the township board. If it gets approved by the rec board, then it gets submitted and it gets published and it eventually becomes effective. The reason we're doing this now and trying to make sure everybody's aware of what's going on is I don't want people thinking we shovel this through. This is not something that we got up one morning and said, I think we need to see if we can hustle something through the township really quick that nobody even knows about, including us, and let's see if we can do it. We're responding to the situation that the state legislature has set up. And I'm trying to do everything I can to get as much valid information on it. That's why I finally got a hold of the attorney for the townships association that's doing their ordinance. And the lady at Michigan State University that is charged with writing that ordinance. I want to get as much information and as valid stuff as possible, and I'd rather continue working with them pro proactively because obviously if they say, you know what, the people are just too hard to get along with and we don't like it, they'll wait till November, make the file, and they'll get what they want. And, and I don't see where that benefits us. The board's charge and our concern is how do we maximize the protection for our residents as much as we can and how do we maximize the financial benefit for the township as a whole because, as you all know, I'm, personally, money don't grow on trees for me. It doesn't grow on trees for the township, and we would rather get revenue sources like we have traditionally for years now in the township that don't come from raising taxes for the residents. Our taxes here are the lowest of the five townships that are around us, and, and that doesn't happen by accident. So we prefer not to raise it, but to find other ways to do it, and I have to say, for a small township like ours, getting a million and a half to two million bucks. That is a lot of money. That's like two years total operating budget. Well, you don't know how much you're getting out of that, so that's what's the thing. You don't know what percentage you are getting out of that. Well, we, don't, we don't get any percentage at all. That's the dollars that we get from it. A hundred percent of that, like two to two point one million dollars. You get all of that. It doesn't go to the owner, no one else. You, it doesn't go to, it goes enough. directly, it goes directly to the state. I, when I called them and asked them about the grant, I said, do I read this correctly? For 300 megawatts, we would qualify for a million and a half dollar grant if we could get this done by the end of September. And she said, yeah, but, but you know, you have to use the money for the township, but I chuckled and I said, I'm pretty sure we got plenty of things we could do the township for. You know, about the each of them. Yeah, but don't get any of them, not a penny of them.
all of those with a high degree of certainty right now. We're a little early in the process, but something that we incorporate into our standard process as a company is um, something called a hazard mitigation analysis, an HMA, and that is um, highly intensive. Um, tends to be a minimum eight-hour workshop where we work with an industry professional on different identifying any possible hazard, modeling the worst case scenario, um, unlikely scenarios, so you know, very high temperatures, low winds, etc. And we model really every single worst case scenario, and then we say, how are we going to do it to get back to the um, This happens far later on once we have a solidified state plan and we have you know, more certainty around some of the current unknowns as it relates to our design. But, um, that is a, an increasingly standard protocol, and it's something that is very robust in terms of really identifying any possible thing that could go wrong, and then what are we going to do to mitigate it or respond to it. Um, that's something we can discuss incorporating into the ordinance. Um, we do it all the time, but you're increasingly seeing the, the HMA being codified in um, best ordinances as they pop up around the country. But if you're a company that has already been involved in other development,
have a good company, then we might end up with some diverse down the line. But if we don't, then it needs to be revealed too. And I just think this is something that we all have that website in our, in our fingertips. And I would encourage you to send those questions to me so I can okay. call yeah. them to get them to her. But also, oh, I would suggest... I would even, you, I would even Oh, oh, I agree. We're trying, we're trying to I agree. We need to we need to get a day when the planning commission and they can come well, and say we're that. Trying to get a I agree. For this PC meeting and all of our schedules that match up, but I agree. Can, whether it's a PC meeting or some other meeting, because I've got a whole set of questions myself. I agree, today. but I think there's value there's value in going to that June 12th meeting because remember the lady that's writing the ordinance and has to decide whether or not the issues are reasonable or not to put in the law is the one who's supposed to be there. But I and so if you have those concerns, let me finish. If you have those concerns, you have to get them in. And I say that only because we have to be realistic of what the issue is. Okay, if I don't we think it's system at all. It, so no, you said the planning commission entirely? No, that's I don't know. So so basically the state still doesn't have <coughs> No, you. Really? I'm talking about you. You're I'm here. Angela Wells. Well, yeah. You're part of the planning. Right, but you're saying that we should really meet on this a little bit. I'm trying to call in the planning commission. There may be nothing about this. You guys are the go-to people that your community should call to ask questions about this. And I don't know how you all have left out. I don't understand out. how you didn't know or whoever didn't know because we had a planning commission meeting just this last week. Just last week. That's all we had. But, but it's conceivable you called the day before they I called them. I don't know. I, regardless of it, the bottom line is that it was brought forward to us. There's no ordinance when it comes to right. this type of tool. Yeah, I'm fully. I am. Yes, three to four. So over one, it would just stop the But the problem is, is there's no precedent. That's no, I'm just as concerned about the work and the workings of how. We just found out about this like three and a half weeks ago. So it's not like we were hiding it. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was brought up. I'm not saying hiding, I'm saying the work came out of it. Like, you're, 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 you're supervising. The planning commission all has regular jobs and life they do. Oh, they need to know. I know, but I'm just saying my meeting with Angela Wells was brought up as an issue. Yeah, and I think it's just that we need to get this out of the way. Yeah, and I don't know how you all left it out. Yeah, and I don't know how you all left it out. Yeah, and I don't know how you all left it out. Yeah, and I don't know how you all left it out. Yeah, and I don't know how you all left it out. Yeah, and I don't know how you all left it out. Yeah, and I don't know how you all left it out. Yeah, and I don't know how you all left it out. Yeah, and I don't know how you all left it out. Yeah, and I don't know how you all left it out. Yeah, brought up those concerns from the other when it was first brought up when we decided that we could come in and listen to what Vesper's got to say and schedule a special meeting or a PC meeting or otherwise to get some of the more technical questions. But a lot of times I can't have the answer to those questions, especially if it's coming from somebody that's technical like myself. It's a good thing to do. So uh, that's going to be difficult to do. But I think the bottom line is.
will say that we have not developed an operational standalone energy storage system yet. Um, one project that I manage is um, going to be constructed very soon. It's our latest stage asset. Um, we've developed best systems that are coupled with solar, but um, I do want to be transparent that we don't something exactly like this. Our company doesn't have operational yet. Um, so this is new. System failure. So what if these are impacted, health impacted, land impacted, 
just so you know, one of the things is these enclosures, where they put the cells are actually all enclosed. And in our case, we told them we wanted a, uh, an eight foot fence, not six or seven, because they did have a case someplace where some deer managed to jump the seven foot yeah, fence. Yeah, yeah. Get in there mess them up. So they, yeah. the, even, even the state has said, we really think they should be eight feet. And I said, yeah, yeah, make them eight feet. I mean, what's another foot of fence to make sure that's not like the like damage? We have to, this could be a, a possibility that someone gets hurt. So well, I mean, at any time you have something where somebody, if they, you know, yeah. if they trust yeah. fans to come on a right. facility where they shouldn't be, that could happen. That same company has just people who used to have those exotic animals zoo out here. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't tell me they're safe because you got them in a little hardwood store with that on. <laughs> But they, they would cover that. That's, that's they would be responsible for it. So, so, Christ, so I understand this. So right now in this current phase, there's a cooperation between Vesper and Grove and Township. Yeah. What, whatever ordinances that we try to create is going to maximize the environmental protection at this point, correct? That's the intent. Because in November, it goes to the state. They seem to have reduced restrictions. Well, from what I want, yeah. Right. And that includes, I assume, septic systems apparently are going to the state's level as well, correct? Not yet, but, not yet, but they're going to. So we need to try to figure out if we can maximize the environmental protection from air pollution, soil pollution, water pollution, that's what we want to do now, correct? Yeah. Because one way or the other, they're in lease to buy, that property is theirs. <coughs> okay, so they and, and you don't have to, you can read the language, right. like I said, you'll see. It's right. pretty clear. It's going to go through. So, so it sounds like we want to try to make sure that they're protecting every aspect yeah. of life that they potentially have. That's an excellent summary, yeah. But is the agreement, just to be clear, now I'm confused, is it between the owner and the best firm or the township and the best firm? The agreement on this operation would be between the township and Vesper as to what the requirements are. Okay, and then the... The, the, the owner really has probably got nothing to do with it because ultimately I think they're going to buy the piece of property. But the yeah. agreement is, this is what has to happen. We have to both get comfortable that what we're doing is reasonable, doable and safe and can be done and then that agreement has to be memorialized in either a, a special use permit or an ordinance probably be a special use permit and they have to get a document that says you have provided all the information we wanted you are now authorized to move to construction as long as you got your probably going to need it air water and uh, soil permits as well they again i've asked a couple of times, what do they need the air and water permits for? They don't really make something there. And they've never answered it, so I'm assuming we can get the answer from the lady on, on June the 12th. Yeah, they need a soil erosion permit because it's a construction project. The so. water meter will too, especially if they're stocking any type of hazardous chemicals, calories, toxins, and And that's probably why. I agree. What's the opportunity for mobile experts to look at your Ordinance is 
the person I've been talking to, and that's what's going to be at the township office at 5:30 on the 12th. Town Township Yes. Township Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Danielle, yeah. I'm just saying. Are you sure you don't want to hear? Oh. Okay. 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 in a two-part process yep. the first one is when they start building the second is when it becomes Fair operational so it won't and none of that money will come to us until 2029 right uh, probably well if they, so start 20, if they start building it in 28 you would get part of it when they start when they actually well, finish I think it she said that in 29 right. 29 yeah. is operationally operational like that's when you get the last operation one. jessica you mentioned earlier um that there was significant testing that still needed to be done on this property to make sure it's a good fit. So something along those lines. What exactly does that entail? Um, I guess more just to also have an idea of, I don't know, is it likely that it, it could come to fruition or not? Yeah, um, so perhaps significant is too strong of a term. Um, there's still a few like outstanding field studies that we need to do. So these a phase two environmental site assessment to hone in on any prior use of the site that would affect our development outlook, um, our phase one simply. Um, well, this looks like pretty virgin land. Yeah, um, it is. It's, there, there have been no identified that's, hazards or really that, um, obstructions. So it's kind of standard <coughs> stuff. Even when the township sold some of the property across the street that used to be the old state looks good. We had an environmental assessment done for the buyers so that we could be assured that nobody would come back later and say, oh, the township, they screwed us. They sold us a bunch of contaminated land. We knew it wasn't, so they had a bunch of soil farms and stuff. Mm -hmm. They did just to prove there was nothing buried out there. Well, and we paid it. for it to make sure the property was sold. Wetland delineation, geotechnical analysis, um, hydrology, 
anthropology study um, that our Ulta took the boundary survey to complete. Um, there, there's a, a laundry list of necessary items that aren't unique to renewable development. It's like the standard development due diligence practices. So some of those are ongoing, some have been completed, and there are others that are still ahead of us. What's the country of origin of the batteries themselves? And are there any offshore network connections? Um, so it depends again. Um, I can't say who will be, will be selecting. Um, so on my late stage project, for instance, to ground in an example, uh, we are using Sundra as a manufacturer. They're based out of China. Um, I know on our solar side of the company, we have been sourcing our solar panels from a domestic producer supplier. Um, I don't have a lot of visibility into that side of the business, so I, I don't have the name, but I have um, been able to source any, locally. Yeah, any offshore network connections to these? I am not aware of it. So, yeah. This is an article from Roland Township. Well, the title is Roland Township's Auto Battery Energy Storage System. This was in the Michigan Home Paper, May 6th. This is the very first sentence. A wood lot in Grand Poland Township will soon be home to one of the first battery storage facilities under consideration in Michigan. Now, I have a question about that spot. You say it's 62 acres, and you're going to use 12 to 14 acres for your site. Five acres with these containers on it. So if there's five acres and then you've got, it would logically be two acres around each side, that would make um, five plus eight is what, 13? And the rest is all woods. What if you have a tinder box situation in the summer where you have no water, no rain, it is dry, and then you have this five acres of fire that happens with batteries and you say it doesn't come out of the containers until the top burns off, then we've got this explosive fire going up in the middle giving us a wood lot. What is the logic of that? Just like in the mail, we put it out. Yeah, I can't. Say what? I, we put it out. That's all I can say. We're, that's what we're there for is to stop the fire from spreading. Uh, if, in the drought season, we use the mutual aid as much as possible. And, the uh, Holly Hotel fire, I think there's 27 departments there. So there's like seven ladders there. So it's, you, do, you call what you need. So we had a uh, fire in one of the wheat fields here last year. We had, I think, five departments show up to put it out. So it's, it's obviously, the earlier you catch it, the easier it is to put it out. But, you know. but I thought you couldn't put it out. But the brush fire you can put out. You can't put it in a container. <coughs> So we're, that's what we do there to protect it from spreading into the woods. So what would the friend do if this is rough country? And 10 acres if this is like, and this is 50, 60 acres, what would the friend do? Would it be considered on putting in another five there? Since we're saying that it takes 10 acres to run one of these things. Another five what? Uh, another five containers. We've maxed out the available capacity. So the, the um, us landing on that 300 megawatt number, that uh, came from a pretty sophisticated analysis and positive reliability. So that number can't increase. Oh, the wire there. That's how much that, that wire can support. So um, the ICC, the, the power transmission. Without putting the wire. Yes. So yes, to be candid from a land area perspective, there, there is more space, you know, the, the 50 developer would try to do more if there was more capacity available, but there's not. So I'll tell you here that the, this will not be larger than approximately 10 years. Um, is there anything being entertained that we're asking for um, acres of the use of branch show that? Is there anything um, being considered when it comes to
change, they would have to come back for a revised site. Yeah, this is far too small for the type of solar projects that has to be I mean, minimum like a thousand acres for the type of solar that we need. We're in the, yeah, utility scale, so. It's a lot of sunshine. Would, yeah, I used to work in community solar, it's where I came to Nusker, and um, the community solar installation is something that you know, sounds like perhaps this group would really appreciate in terms of the power staying local, uh, stays in the distribution lines, it's not managed by like an ITC system. So um, something like that would take about 20 acres, but that is not something that Nusker does. I will tell you right now, there information about water runoff from the batteries not generally available to the public currently. Um, and secondary convenience is a big concern of mine because of chemical um, So in Asia, mostly they put concrete for the whole ship. Everything's in concrete. Um, here, generally, uh, we can take a little cheaper. Put it in, put it in burn, and put it in rock. And 
advisor at Springfield, if that's what you're asking. No. When I got approached by this, and I did text her, but she couldn't be here today for it, but I've, I've tried to make them aware as I can through their supervisor.
there an indication that they got a site plan approved and they met the criteria for the township? Okay, so it, has, it doesn't go to the building of the prison? No, because then they still have to, they've got several years to get started on it. That's when the first payment will be. And then when they actually turn it on live and everybody goes there to test it and see it work, that's when they do the second one. It's basically an incentive that the state is offering to municipalities to say, hey, you know, the governor has really tried to implement these renewable energy plans throughout the state. So it's an incentive that they're providing. But that application, if you will, has to be submitted by the end of September if we're going to have any opportunity to receive those funds. They won't actually be received, you know, if, if we even receive the grant. They wouldn't be received here or begin to be received until the implementation of that project. But the application window is really what closes at the end of September. So is it really a site plan has to be approved or just a letter Sorry, of what? intent? Is it really site plan needs to be approved by then or just a letter of intent? Uh, well, it says they want a letter that says their site plan approved for construction. Okay. So the maintenance, the repair, everything else, those expenses will be paid for by this county? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay.